Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new video of Callosome BD. Today we are going to discuss on medicine. The topic of medicine we are going to discuss is long cases. Before going into the discussion, I want to ask you a question. What are the most common respiratory diseases we find in our medicine world? Yeah, I know, everybody will answer the same thing because it's too easy. The answers are asthma and COPD. Yeah, you guys are right. And for long cases also, this topic are very much important. Every student invariably has to go through the long cases of asthma and COPD. And it's a bit tricky because there are many confusing things in this topic. But as we are here, we are here to clear all the confusions. And for that, this video of ours is going to be about the things you must know of asthma and COPD to present a long case nicely, properly and smoothly in the exam. Why wasting time? Let's go directly into the topic. We all know in case of a long case, first we are supposed to take the history from the patient. Now, what will the patient of asthma and COPD give us in history? Both of the patient will give us the same sort of history, such as they will have cough, they will have breathlessness, and they will have sometimes sputum. But how will you differentiate between them? That is our main concern. And I am getting into that topic only. In case of COPD, the symptoms are continuous. That means the patient have, will have the symptoms all throughout the year. But in case of the patient of asthma, the symptoms will be intermittent. That means he will have a symptom-free period. In case of COPD, the patient will give us positive smoking history. In most of the cases of COPD, we can see the patient are chain smoker. They have a history of at least 10 pack years of uh, taking cigarettes. But in case of asthma, in most of the cases, we will find family history. That means some other family member of from his family is suffering from asthma. COPD exacerbates in cold and dust. But in case of asthma, the allergen is the main factor for exacerbation. Now, if we do physical examination on the patient, what are the sign symptoms we can find? In case of COPD, the shape of the chest would be barrel chest. What is a barrel chest? A barrel chest is the chest where the anterior posterior diameter of the chest has become equal to the transverse diameter and in case of asthma in childhood asthma the shape of the chest become pectus carinatum that means pigeon chest and what happens in this case the sternum is pushed forward the main difference in the physical finding of asthma and COPD is the extra pulmonary manifestation of COPD but in case of asthma there is no extra pulmonary manifestation the extra pulmonary manifestations are increased prevalence of osteoporosis, muscle wasting, altered fat metabolism contributing to weight loss, increased circulatory inflammatory markers and peripheral edema which is due to impaired salt and water excretion. Now the most important differentiating point, the investigation. There are lots of investigation which we use to differentiate between asthma and COPD in our words. Uh, the common investigations are discussed here. In case of CBC, in COPD, we will find polycythemia and increased pack cell volume. But in case of asthma, we will find eosinophilia. The main thing is in COPD, we will never find anemia. If the patient has anemia, there is a chance the patient is going in the direction of bronchial carcinoma. If we examine the sputum of COPD, we will find increased neutrophil and CD4 T lymphocyte that is we will find this if the patient is having infection and infection is pretty much common in case of COPD but in case of asthma we will find increased eosinophil count and increased CD8 lymphocyte count now if we look at the extras in case of COPD uh, we will find a tubular heart shaped what is the tubular heart shape if you look the shape of the heart here is tubular and the lung field will be hyperinflated that's why it has become blackened there will be low flat diaphragm 
and the intercostal space will be increased. But in case of asthma, the X-ray would be normal. If we do lung function test, the forced, forced expiratory uh, volume in the first second and the forced vital capacity will be decreased in both asthma and COPD. And the ratio of FEV1 and FVC would also be decreased in both of the cases. And the most important thing, the reversibility. The reversibility is in case of COPD, it's not reversible. But in case of asthma, it's reversible. Now what's this? The reversibility is the thing that if we use bronchodilator, after using bronchodilator, in case of asthma, there will be increase in 12% of the forced expiratory volume after administration of the bronchodilator. But in case of COPD, it don't increase. And by this, we can differentiate between asthma and COPD. In case of peak expiratory flow rate, it will be decreased in case of COPD, but in case of asthma, it will increase by 15% after administration of bronchodilator. And there will be morning dipping. Now what is morning dipping? In asthma, there is a dermal variation. If in the early morning, the peak expiratory flow rate falls by uh, 20%, then this phenomenon is a uh, called morning dipping and it is a characteristics of uncontrolled severe bronchial asthma and after six minutes of exercise there will be 15 percent decrease in the peak expiratory flow rate and these are the diagnostic criteria of asthma if we look at the ecg in case of copd if there is a corpomolary present it will show the feature of right ventricular hypertrophy but in case of asthma the ECG would be normal. The treatment of asthma and COPD is also different. In case of acute exacerbation of asthma and COPD, the main difference would be in case of oxygen therapy, uh, in COPD we give low flow oxygen, but in case of asthma we are supposed to give high flow oxygen. Now you guys may have a question that why uh, low concentration of oxygen is given in COPD and why high flow oxygen is given in asthma. In COPD, the patient is dependent on hypoxic drive for respiration. High flow oxygen blunts the chemoresponsiveness of the respiratory center in the medulla and thus aggravates respiratory failure. To avoid this, low flow oxygen is given in COPD. In case of COPD, the patient comes to us with suppurative infection. Most of the time there are infections. So in case of COPD, the patient is given uh, antibiotics in most of the cases, but in case of asthma, the antibiotic is not used. Previously, we have said that uh, in COPD, there is extra pulmonary manifestation. So there may be edema. So to subside the edema, we use diuretics. But in case of asthma, the diuretics is not used. Though there are many dissimilarities in the treatment option of asthma and COPD, but there are also some similarities also. We use some drugs both in asthma and COPD and such drugs are in case of nebulization, we use salbutamol and ipropium bromide both in asthma and COPD. This combination of salbutamol and ipropium bromide is called Windel Plus. We also use glucocorticoids both in COPD and asthma. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. This was the first part of the video uh, of the series we are working on on asthma and COPD. Uh, there are two more videos in the series and on the, the two more videos we will be talking about the cross question you will be asked in the exams on asthma and COPD. And I hope you like this video and if you like this video don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.